Good morning. I have a passion to transmit the population evidence about health risks to promote preventive attitudes in people at the individual level. This is already our eighth installment in the podcast of F Salud Connect with Epidemiology about health risks, after referring to tobacco, sedentary lifestyle, unsafe sex, high blood pressure, alcohol, drug abuse, cholesterol and triglycerides, Today, I would like to talk about diabetes. Diabetes, or increased blood sugar, is a chronic disease that appears when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin, or when the body does not effectively use the insulin it produces. The effect of uncontrolled diabetes is hyperglycemia, increased blood sugar, which over time produces severely damages in many organs and systems, especially nerves and blood vessels. About 8.5% of adults have diabetes. In our beloved global burden of disease, GBD, it is the eighth cause of morbidity and morbidity measured in Dallas, with a tendency to increase since 1990, associated with the increase in obesity and global sedentary lifestyle. In 2017, 1.6 1.6 million people died as a direct result of diabetes, and high blood glucose levels were the cause of another 2.2 million deaths. In your last test, you can check your blood glucose level. The levels considered optimal in a person without diabetes should be in between 70 and 110 milligrams per deciliter on an empty stomach, and 140 to 145 milligrams deciliter after eating. There are three types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, also called insulin dependent, juvenile or of onset in childhood, is characterized by low insulin production and requires daily administration of this hormone. The cause of type 1 diabetes is still unknown and cannot be prevented with current knowledge. Its symptoms include, among others, excessive excretion of urine, thirst, constant hunger, weight loss, visual disturbances, and fatigue. These symptoms may appear suddenly. Type 2 diabetes, also called non-insulin dependent or of onset in adulthood, it is due to inefficient use of insulin. This type represents the majority of global cases and is largely due to excessive body weight and physical inactivity. The symptoms may be similar to those of type 1 diabetes, but often less intense. Consequently, the disease can be diagnosed only when it has several years of evolution and complications have appeared. Until recently, this type of diabetes was only observed in adults, but now it is also manifesting in children. Gestational diabetes is the hyperglycemia that appears during pregnancy. These women are at a greater risk of complications during pregnancy and childbirth. In addition, both mothers and their children are at greater risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the future. What are the frequent consequences of diabetes? Over time, diabetes can damage the heart, the blood vessels, the eyes, the kidneys and the nerves. Adults with diabetes have a two to three times greater risk of myocardial infarction and stroke. Neuropathy of the feet combined with reduced blood flow increases the risk of foot ulcers, infection, and ultimately amputation. Diabetic retinopathy is an important cause of blindness and is the consequence of the damage of the small blood vessels of the retina that accumulates over time. 2.6% of the global cases of blindness are a consequence of diabetes. Finally, diabetes is among the leading causes of kidney failure. How we can reduce the burden of diabetes? Well, prevention is the key. It has been shown that simple lifestyle-related measures are effective in preventing type 2 diabetes or delaying its onset to help prevent type 2 diabetes and its complications, you should achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. 
stay physically active, at least 30 minutes of regular activity of moderate intensity on most days of the week. To control the weight, a more intense activity may be necessary. Eat a healthy diet that avoids sugar and saturated fats. Avoid smoking, since it increases the risk of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. The diagnosis of diabetes can be established early with relatively relatively cheap blood tests, and the treatment consists of a healthy diet and physical activity, along with the reduction of blood glucose and other known risk factors that damage blood vessels. To avoid complications, it is also important to quit smoking. Among the interventions that are feasible and economical are glycemic control, particularly in people suffering from type 1 diabetes. Patients with type 1 diabetes need insulin and patients with type 2 diabetes may be treated with oral medications, although they may also need insulin. Also, you need to control the blood pressure and have care of your feet. Other economic interventions are retinopathy screening tests, control of broad lipids, especially cholesterol, and the detection of early signs of diabetes in your kidneys. Remember, think of yourself, others, and the planet. Diabetes can be prevented and can also be cured. Avoid overweight and sedentary lifestyle. Practice with the example and do the exercise of physical activity that pleases you. Better if it can be in a group. Do a minimum of half an hour every day. Good information on time is essential. Remember, prevention is life. Thank you.